Hello everybody, Clayton here at eTrailer.com. Here at eTrailer.com, we install, test, and review a lot of different products to help you as a customer make a more educated decision before your purchase. And today, we're going to be working on a 2017 Toyota RAV4, and we're going to be taking a look at, and I'll be showing you how to install a Class 3 hitch by Kurt. This is what our hitch is going to look like installed. As you can see, the only visible part is going to be our receiver tube. So our cross tube is going to be completely concealed and it's going to look nice and factory. And you might be looking to add a trailer hitch to your RAV4 for a few different reasons. Maybe you're wanting to tow some jet skis to the lake for the weekend, or you want to use a cargo carrier to get some of that extra cargo out of the back of your RAV4, making more room for your passengers, or you're tired of loading your bikes onto the roof or trying to cram them into the back and you're wanting to use a bike rack. This hitch is going to work great for all those options. Like I said, this is a class three hitch. So that means we're going to have a two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. And this plays well with a lot of different accessories. Our hitch is gonna offer us a 5 8 inch pin hole. As you can see, our pin fits through there just fine. You do wanna keep in mind though, the pin and clip do not come included with this kit, but you can find one here at eTrailer.com. And we are gonna have rolled style safety chain loops. They look really nice and they function just as well. You can use all different kinds of safety chains, so you're not gonna have to change them out to work with your trailer. Our hitch is going to be a steel construction, so it's going to hold up really well for a long time. It also, it also offers us a really nice black powder coat finish to help resist rust and corrosion. One thing I really like is this reinforced collar on the outside. It just adds a little bit of stability and makes it look finished. Now we can go ahead and get a few measurements for you. The measurement from the ground to the uppermost part of our receiver tube is going to be right at 15 inches. And the measurement from our pinhole to the outermost part of our fascia is going to be about 2.5 inches. You just want to keep that number in mind for any folding accessories to make sure they're not going to make contact with your rear fascia. And as far as our weight capacities are concerned, we are going to have a 3,500 pound towing capacity. Keep in mind that's the weight of the trailer and the load on the trailer. And then our tongue weight rating is going to be 350 pounds, and that's going to be 350 pounds pushing straight down on your receiver tube. And one feature I really like about this hitch is that it does work with your kick sensor. Our vehicle does not have a kick sensor, but if you do have one at home, it'll work just fine. This hitch is going to offer us some great features, allowing us to take any of our toys with us wherever we're going. Now, in terms of installation, getting this installed isn't too bad. There's no welding or drilling, just minor trimming of plastic components. With that being said, I'll walk you through how to get it installed now. To start our installation, we are going to be trimming our fascia. We have a diagram in our instructions, but the diagram is going to tell us to go four inches from the center point right here. We're going to have two inches on either side. We're going to go an inch and three quarters deep. Now we're just going to trim this with some tin snips. You can kind of pull down on the fascia just to give you a little bit more leverage. As you saw, I just kind of scored that plastic with my utility knife. We can actually just take our fascia and kind of bend it on that line. That's going to help us kind of break this off and then cut come back and cut it with that knife. We're now ready to remove our underbody panel on the driver's side. We're gonna do this with a small flat blade screwdriver and a trim panel tool. Just kinda wanna come into that clip. Stick your screwdriver under there and then turn it. We can grab that trim panel tool and pull out our plastic connector. We're gonna have one more connector back here. We're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket to take that off. With that clip removed, we can now set our panel off to the side. Now we're gonna grab a 17 millimeter socket and remove our hardware for our tow hook. This will not be reinstalled. We now need to lower down our exhaust. We're gonna support it using a cam buckle strap. You can find cam buckle straps here at e-trailer if you don't have one. We're simply just gonna loop this down around our coil and then run that over to the other side. So I just wanna cinch that down. Now we wanna grab a pry bar, kinda of put that over our muffler and then pry it out to the side. With our hanger almost off, we kind of pull that out of the hanger. We are going to have one more hanger to remove. We 
we are going to be removing this lower exhaust hanger the same way we removed that first one. Then we can loosen our strap a little bit just to get some more clearance for our hitch. We now need to clean out our mounting holes for our hitch. I'm just going to spray some lubricant in there and then use a wire brush to help clean that out. You can find wire brushes here at your trailer. We're now ready to raise our hitch up and this is going to be our hardware orientation. I'm going to grab our provided bolt with a conical tooth washer. You're going to put the washer on the bolt with the teeth facing up towards the hitch. We now need to remove this plastic paneling right here. There's going to be five push pin fasteners on each one. We'll do that same technique we used for the underbody panel. Get that screwdriver under there, kind of turn it to the side and help open up that clip. We can get our trim panel tool in there. And pull that out like so. We'll repeat that same process for our remaining clips. With that last fastener removed, we can just lower our panel down out of the way. We'll repeat that same process on the passenger side. If you have a kick sensor, it will be located behind your fascia. It will be removed by removing two 10 millimeter nuts. You'll dangle that out and then zip tie it to your hitch after you raise it into position. Now with an extra set of hands, we're ready to lift our hitch into position. We're gonna kind of lift it up like so, and then pull the fascia back around our hitch. We can get one bolt started on each side so the hitch can support itself. We can now grab a 19 millimeter socket and tighten down our hardware. We're now ready to come back and torque down all of our hardware. All of our torque specs can be found in our instructions. We now want to reinstall our exhaust. We'll just lift that up and push it onto our hanger. Now we can remove our strap. We're now ready to reinstall our underbody panels. We're going to have to trim out kind of this corner area here so that it fits around our hitch. Now we're going to trim out our underbody panel. I went ahead and drew a line on there according to our instructions. Again, I'm going to do this with 10 snips. With our underbody panel trimmed, we can now reinstall it in the reverse order we took it apart. With all of our underbody panels reinstalled and our hardware torqued down, we're now ready to hit the road. That's going to do it for our look at and our installation of the Curt Class 3 trailer hitch receiver on our 2017 Toyota RAV4.